Morning, 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 guys. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler, and Bugsy Malone is right down there. She says hello. I think she's a little bit under the weather this morning. I'm not sure if she's got allergies or something, but she's pretty miserable. I went to say hello to her this morning, and she was grumpy. Anyway, how are you? I hope you are all happy and healthy doing the things that you love with the people that you love doing them with. I sure as heck like doing these with you guys. It's a lovely Friday morning here. Happy Friday to you. Please hit the like button on the channel. No, on the video. Hit the like button on the video like you always do. Hit the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Join the now 9200 that have gone before. Welcome back to all of those. Welcome to the new. And hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topics. And guys, listen, I woke up early. I woke up early because I went to bed early. And I wake up to the news, the story in the Daily Mail. And you know how I feel about the Daily Mail. I know that Sammy Mockbell works for them and he's the guy I always talk about who puts the word could in front of any ridiculous idea that pops up in his mind and justifies it as legitimate journalism. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run too crazy with it. Or maybe I am, maybe I am because it's Friday. I don't know. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm too excited to dismiss it. Even the plausibility of it seems a little bit out there. But Edmund taps over, according to the Daily Mail. And this one isn't from Mockbell, it's from someone else. So I don't know if this guy is as clickbaity as uh, Mockers is. But apparently, <laughs> apparently, dare to dream, Tottenham are. Expected to complete the signing of Edmund Tapsoba. That personal terms are not going to be a problem. And that the player is eager to join Tottenham. What are we doing here? <laughs> what is going on? I don't even think that, that the valuation is prohibitive. I think from what I've read, it's like 30 million euros. Which is a bit of a head scratcher. Because I think he's... He's exactly what we need. And if he's desperate to come, you know, get on board it. Get on board it. Please don't mess this one up, Daniel Levy. You know, we got all excited about Raya. And now it looks like we're getting Vicario, which is basically done. The here we go is done. It's not official yet, but it's done. I said in yesterday's video, I just don't know how I feel about Vicario. I'm sitting on the fence. The more I've, the more I've looked into him, the more research I've done, I'm on board with it. I think he'll be very good. However, I think one of the areas of his game that he has to work on in training, and hopefully they'll be able to do that, whoever the goalkeeping coach will be will be able to help him out with that regard, is his, like his shot stopping is great, right? As it should be, you're a goalkeeper. But he likes to parry the ball. And... He doesn't seem to have too much of a concern where he parries it. If you look at Hugo Lloris, he's always, you know, from years and years and years of doing this, he's always trying to parry the ball away from the goal. If you're diving to your left, he's pushing it that way. If you're diving to your right, he's pushing it that way. Whereas Vicario seems to get his, his whole body behind the ball. And I mentioned this the other day. I'm not sure if that's a great thing or a, or a bad thing with regards, you know, is he over jumping? Um, and sort of diving past the ball and then it hits his body then you've got no chance of controlling the parry but even when he gets his hands behind it he just parries it anywhere and I feel like that's going to cost Tottenham a few goals by poachers that are around the box looking for the, the follow up so he needs to probably work on that but apart from that I like what I see about him I do like what you see I, you know, I do think he he is coming out of the box he can He's got a better kind of short passing consistency than I initially thought. His long passing isn't, isn't as successful as Reyes is, but he doesn't have a monster like Ivan Tony to aim at. Ivan Tony's ability to win aerial duels is second to none in the Premier League. So um, maybe there's always context, isn't there? You've got to bake into the stats when you're looking at it. You've got to go and dig in and wire those stats the way they are. Is it because of the way that they play? Is it because of who they're playing with? Is it because of the players around them? You know, like there's a million different things to consider 
stats in and of themselves are they're important but they're not on their own they they can lead you down wrong paths if you're not you know careful with uh, considering why or what they are saying anyway back to tap sober to me what are you doing bugs come on girl to me like I love this guy I absolutely love him you know why he's ridiculously fast junior sprinter level stuff he's very strong he's very tall he's calm when the ball's at his feet he's press resistant which is important he can run with the ball progress the ball he doesn't look for overly overly complicated solutions all the time you know, I just think he's gonna be if he does come to Tottenham exactly the sort of centre-back that we need the only real concern I guess is that he is a right-footed player playing on the left side to some people myself included balance is preferable but I'm not gonna worry about him having to play the ball with his right foot if it's him that's doing it versus leveling down to get a specific left-footed left-sided centre-back and you know on that regard if we do get tap sober and you can also go and get like a James Madison then you know you're gonna be probably that's about 110 million done on Vicario Madison and tap sober then you probably understand then knowing how Tottenham operate why we're probably going to get Clement Longley at 5 million because if you're going to go big with one you have to go smaller with the other to a degree um, and then maybe Tottenham also go and get Tosin from Fulham who again is a very very useful player that can easily fit in behind Romero or and give him I think a little bit of competition Tosin's also very good bringing the ball out he's comfortable with the ball at his feet He's incredible in the air. I think he's in the top like five percentile for aerial duels. And that again is in no small part because of the way that the that Fulham set up and how people play against Fulham. Um, he's also like, I think in the top two or three percentile for clear, I think he does like six or seven or seven or eight clearances a game. So he's kind of a bit no nonsensey, which it's nice to have a little bit of variety right you've got the kind of lunatic in Romero you've got the athlete in Tapsoba you've got the experience of Longley and you've got the steady head of Tosin and between the four of them I'd be very happy and satisfied with that back four ideal scenario Tottenham don't sign Longley and sign Hiroki Ito I think he is better value for money higher ceiling I told you all about him before and he's left footed left sided I do think you need at least one left-footed uh, centre-back in there and if we were to sign Adab uh, Tosin, Romero obviously and Tapsoba then we don't have one so we will need either one and that will probably be long way. Mm -hmm. Morning mate. And I'll be okay with that but this guy is always out running. Every day I see him. I must, must go two or three runs a day because I go out at different times and he's always out. It's crazy. Um, anyway, so yeah, guys, get excited. It's, it's like, is it, is it dare to dream stuff? If we get taps over done in the next few days, if he doesn't get drawn out, because I do think there's a little bit of a concern, right? And before I get onto where I want to go with this, I read this morning that Manchester United might end up being a little bit in trouble because of the plans that they had to sign Andre Onana from Inter Milan. They were going to pay 55. 60 million for Onana because David De Gea is out of contract I think next year or maybe even this summer I'm not sure but then Inter Milan's plans were to go and buy Vicario from Empoli and so Tottenham have kind of stolen a march and the deals all agree but the contracts aren't signed yet so there's a little bit of a concern that something could happen in the over the next 24 48 hours you hope not but it is a here we go so you'd imagine it's all done and if it is all done then does us signing Vicario and therefore ruining Inter's plans to go after Vicario stop them from selling Onana to Manchester United and if so what does that happen what does that do to Man United's goalkeeping plans where do they go interesting the, the butterfly effect the kind of the knock-ons of 
one decision impacting others indirectly is quite palpable. But anyway, let's assume we've got Vicario. Let's now dream and think that we could get taps over done. And let's not mess around with it because I think at 30, 35 million euros or whatever it is, I think there's incredible value there, incredible value. And the guy's only 24, so he's got a lot of room to improve and become an even better centre half than he already is. I'm very excited about this one. The rumours are that we might be going for Tosin. There's also the rumours about Victor Nelson. I'd be okay with either of those guys coming in to play back up to Romero. Obviously Longley. And then guys, there's the news that was out this morning about James Madison. And that Tottenham are stealing a march on James Madison because, and here's the way that the story is, is being written, because to, uh, Newcastle is signing Sandro Tonali. Now, I don't really understand that because the Sandro Tonali that I've seen play for Brescia and for AC Milan he's more of a like a register he's more like a DMC like a six uh, the, the quarterback like an Andro uh, like an Andre Perlo type of player you know not so much a an attacking midfielder at all if I'm honest unless I'm completely mistaken but I'm pretty certain that he is more of a defensive midfielder. And so the way the story is being written is that, that Newcastle are, are losing interest in James Madison and have turned their attention to Tonali. And Tonali's you know, almost done, the deal's agreed. I think they might even be a here we go on that one today. But why would that matter? Why would that affect Newcastle buying James Madison? I don't really understand it. It's like saying, because Tottenham have signed Edmund Tapsoba, we're not going to sign James Madison. Unless it's a financial thing, but it isn't with Newcastle. So I don't understand. But in any event, a lot of the media are saying that Tottenham are, you know, now front runners for James Madison in no small part because Newcastle have turned their attention to Tenali. Whatever. In any event, if we can get that one done as well, and let's hope that we can, because I think it would be he'd be excellent. Then you can start to look at Tottenham's new spine and get quite excited. You know, you've got Vicario and Goal, who I'm very much warming to. Tapsoba and Romero. In front of them, Bissouma, who I think would be a... Well, act like a new signing this year for me. I don't think we saw anything like the Bissouma we were expecting to last season. And then Madison in front of them, and then Harry Kane up the top. And then a couple of people pivoted around. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's, the reason it's, not, it's not something to sniff at, that one, I don't think. Would you be happy? Let me know in the comments. What would you give the window out of 10 if it finished with Vicario, Tapsoba, Longley, Tosin, Madison, and Harvey Barnes? Those six players, and you kept Kane, and then you got rid of Lloris, Sanchez, Roden, Dyer. Obviously, Lucas Mora, Dan Juma, Perisic, and let's say one of Sessignon or Regulon. One of those two went as well. Let's get rid of Sessignon. What would you give that window? I'm giving that window, I'd, I'd go as far as to say that's probably seven and a half, verging on, no, seven and a half, seven and a half. What do you think? I'll be excited about that. Madison, Tapsoba and Vicario all in before Tottenham even start pre-season training. <sighs> Let me know, guys. Uh, anything else to talk about today? Not really. I'll do a second video if there is later on. Like, subscribe and comment, guys. And as always, bye-bye.